1985, at the height of the popularity of Masters of the Universe, Mattel designers and story makers decided to start work on what would be the next iteration of the franchise to continue it for decades and years to come. Eventually, this storyline became the characters Hero, Eldor, and what was known as the Powers of Greyskull. And it never got released. You can see more about that here. But a lot of work went into it, and some items did come out, including this first mini-comic, which was noted as the first part of a three-part storyline that was going to introduce this next iteration of the Masters of the Universe storyline. Introduce the new characters, introduce the new dinosaurs, introduce new threats, and basically bring the brand forward for what could be continued retail success. As I noted, these characters, while developed, never made it to retail because, well, the brand sort of imploded in 1987. Some of the items did make it, like the Tyrannosaurus Rex was uh, released in the U.S. and Europe, and some of the dinosaurs only made it in the catalog, like Gigantosaurus here, which was going to be the new character slash playset. But that first mini-comic that came out introduced existing fans of the franchise to what would have been what would have been a brand new world for He-Man to explore, where he would have gone back in time and met the Snake Men during their prime, well, I guess their prime, their original uh, incarnation, shall we say, as opposed to when he met the Snake Men in his own time, and he would get dinosaurs to ride to battle the Snake Men's own dinosaurs, and he would dress up in a sort of cloak and Zorro mask to disguise himself, and uh, it, Basically, it set up an entirely new world for He-Man to partake in, and most importantly, he was going to meet the new character, Hero, who only appeared in shadow there in one frame, and He-Man was left at the end of the mini-comic wondering, but who is he? Who is the wizard that could possibly send me back to my own time? Well, this was, as I said, meant to be the start of a brand new storyline, and it was written and developed by Tim Kilpin, who was the brand manager at the time. During my time at Mattel, he was the general manager and a huge supporter of Maddie Collector and, well, my career in general. He's the one responsible for moving me from Hot Wheels to the boys' action group. And because he knew I was working on He-Man, he came up to me one day and handed me a stack of papers from his personal archive. Not the Mattel archive, but just, you know, kind of what he had. And I don't know if in his desk drawer, if you brought him in from home... But they included some storyline concepts he had worked on in 1985 that was an early, early draft of what eventually became the Powers of Skull toy line, which never got released. This included alternate names for it, alternate characters, and a slightly alternate storyline. And you can see how the storyline compares and contrasts with what was presented in that final mini-comic, even though it was only part one of three. Now, this does not cover part two and part three of the mini-comic. This is an early draft, you could say, of part one. But it's a part of Motu history, and history deserves to be remembered, as History Guy says, one of my favorite other YouTube channels. So we did do part two and three in the classics line, but there were no notes for us to go on. The story time that I'm about to take you on just covers an early draft of what became powers of Grayskull. So pull up your easy chair, lie down on your couch in your Victorian lounge that you have in your house, right? We all have these. And uh, we're going to read the early draft of Tim Kilpin's Rangers of Grayskull. And I should add that like most of the story time videos I do, this is going to be a two-parter because there were actually two drafts he gave me. So we're going to do the first draft now. We'll do the second draft in a follow-up video. All right, here we go. The leader, perhaps, is a ranger, one who holds a special bond with nature. His order protected Grayskull Tower and acted as a sort of police throughout Eternia, based at the central tower. Let's call the leader Justin for now. He had gone out on a far-reaching patrol one year, and that's when the Snake Men took control of Eternia. He was about to rush back to Eternia when someone, something, intervened, told him to wait, 
told him he would need more than his normal powers to defeat the Snake Men. He was given the secret of Grayskull. It was this power given to him by whoever that would enable him to marshal an army, fly, etc. Who are these powers? What are these powers? What can he do? Magic? Technology? Speed? Strength? Creation? What's the hook of the toy line? He does something electronic? He is an outcast at first. He is not welcomed when he first returns to his homeland. He is a stranger, but soon he begins to draw together his team. The giant, the master of brute strength. The sage, the wise, magically powerful man who could see into the future. The nimble elf, agile and quiet, able to sneak up and surprise enemies. The hardy dwarf, master of firepower. And Justin had his laser bow, a crossbow that shot laser fire. Together, these rangers would lead the rebellion that would finally overthrow the Snake Men. And now Tim has listed out several possible names for this new team and this new extension of the Motu franchise. And those names include Masters, Laser Rangers, Masters, Gray Skull Warriors, Masters, Spirit of Gray Skull. And finally, Masters, Rangers of Gray Skull. And this one is circled, which makes me maybe think this was his favorite and the one he was proposing. All right, then it lists the bad guys. These will be the bad guys for our new storyline. And of course, we actually already know them because they're the uh, Snake Men, but he lists them off actually with some alternate names. First off, you have King Hiss, H-I-S-S, -S, then Ratlor, followed by Tongue Lasher, and the next two are noted as Medusa Man, who I presume is an early name for Snake Face, and Tanglor, again, who I presume is an early name for Squeeze. Along with He-Man and Skeletor, some things would remain the same. When He-Man and Justin brought their weapons together, amazing, amazing things would happen. Whole armies would fall before it. And that's where he leaves off. Now, the second half of this document uh, looks like to be a later iteration. And again, while it doesn't tell part two and part three of that original mini-comic, it does contain a lot of unique elements, and you can see how it was kind of adapted into that first issue, which did manage to ship. And that's what we're going to get to next time. So stay tuned for part two, and if you like this video, do subscribe, give it a thumbs up, it tells YouTube to share it with more people. And I'll see you for part two very soon.